So here we are in the chain falls. I'm now, right now, standing on the left-hand side, looking back over toward the far side. Here's the reason it's called chain falls. There's a large shaft that travels the width of the compartment, and there's a total of eight of these chain wheels and these chains here. Now these chains can be unhooked from their holding positions where they hang out. This is a manual backup for the, for the powered pointing and training motors on the ship. If you lose motors, lose electrical power, this allows you to continue to point the guns. Now in order to do that, up in the uh, little mechanical space that I had pointed out while in the turret, you could disengage the uh, motorized shaft. The chain that ended up there is what attaches to this wheel. So this wheel could, that gear could then be turned using these eight chain falls. There, likewise, there's another gear just like it on the other end. In the center, you'll see there's a shaft here that travels forward and then travels up. There's another one on the other side. These are what are used to engage with the elevating gear and then it could be used to manually elevate or lower the guns. Well, now here's the problem. You have 25 horsepower training motors, 15 horsepower elevating motors. You're supposed to be able to put a total of 16 guys in here pulling that chain as fast as they can, which is about 125 feet per minute. At that rotational speed, instead of being able to train the turret as fast as 100 degrees a minute, you're now down to maybe 11 or 12 degrees per minute. And that's with these guys pulling as fast and as hard as they can. You're not going to be able to fight a battle if that's as fast as you can move that turret. So there is a problem there, but you always have to have some type of backup, and this is where it was. Now there's other things going on in here that are incredibly cool. First of all, when we were in the powder flat, I told you, I showed you the lever that the uh, hoist man there could use to start and stop the hoist motor. This is the shaft that comes out, and this is the controller for it in here. That controller comes over to this big box. This big box is the actual hoist motor. Now again, these were installed back in 1919-1921-22 time frame. But uh, what makes it particularly interesting is they weren't built for this purpose. We don't, while we don't know exactly what it was built for, we do know that these sat on a shelf in a warehouse for a period of time because look at that legend plate on there. And let's see if I can get the exposure right to where you can do a little better job of reading it. Anyway, I'll try to hold it still and read it. But basically what it's saying is that that motor was built, which means it was, it was accepted on January the 22nd, 1904. So this motor sat in a warehouse for over 10 years. This is definitely early uh, motor technology. But you know what? If it works, it works. And it's reliable. It's easy to, re to service or rebuild. Now this shaft coming out of here is what, what tro rotates the lifting mechanism on the powder hoist. And here's a clutch here. If that thing should bind up rather than damaging the motor, this clutch jumps or skips to, to protect the motor. Now there's a couple of other devices in here that are particularly interesting. You'll see this round protrusion here. There's a shaft going up, and there's also some gear teeth that you can see through that window. Likewise, there's a similar setup here. It doesn't have a shaft that goes up, but it has a shaft that enters this big box here. Well, what these shafts do is they, they have gears that engage with those gear teeth there. Again, that's the turning ring for the turret. So as the turret turns, it turns their little gears 
it rotates this shaft. With that, this is the input into the uh, trainer's director that tells him directly exactly the angle that he's trained at. This other one takes that same angle information, converts it into a, an electrical signal in what's called a Selsen circuit, which stands for uh, self-synchronizing, and sends it down to the uh, plotting room. Now in that plotting room, that way they know very precisely what angle the turret's at. When they, sit, when they work up their firing solutions, the signal comes back up through this and it tells the trainer what angle he's supposed to be pointed at. So you have to have basically, we talk in terms now of analog-digital conversion. Well, this is all analog, but it's mechanical to electrical conversion and that's what took place here. Now the last thing we're going to do while we're up here is I'm going to try to skinny over and we'll take a look through here because there is something that took a long time to discover that we finally discovered when we thought to open and look through this. And that's the turret holding down clips. <laughs> 